Got a zit 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 and a hairy lip. I'm going through puberty. Got a nice sports car golfing under par. I'm going through puberty. Got a nice girlfriend, be with her till the end. I'm going through puberty. I think I'm mature enough to say I'm going through puberty. Oh, the joys of puberty. For typical puberty to begin, there needs to be a rise in testosterone, which is an androgen hormone. This is Brittany Olson, Kelly Otis, Ashley Alward, and Becca Collins, and today we are going to talk about the adrenal androgen hormones. First, we are going to give you a brief overview of the anatomy, and then talk specifically about the effects of androgen hypersecretion. Adrenal androgens are hormones that exert masculinizing effects and promote protein anabolism and growth. The main adrenal androgen is testosterone. The other adrenal androgens, which are androstenedione and dihydroepiandosterone, which is also referred to as DHEA, account for less than 20% of the activity. As you can see in this picture, there are three layers to the adrenal cortex. The outermost layer is the zona glomerulosa, and it produces mineral corticoids. The middle layer, called the zona fasciculata, produces mainly glucocorticoids, and finally the zona reticularis produces mainly androgens. ACTH, released from the anterior pituitary, is the stimulus for androgens to be secreted. This synthesis occurs by converting cholesterol to pregnenolone, and through a series of more complicated reactions in the zona reticularis, this results in the secretion of androgens. Adrenal androgens are secreted in small amounts during infancy and early childhood. Their secretion gradually increases with age, paralleling the growth of the zona reticularis. In adult males, excess adrenal androgens merely accentuate existing secondary sex characteristics, but in prepubertal boys, they can cause precocious development of secondary sex characteristics without testicular growth, for example, hair in the groin and the axilla, as well as facial hair. In females, excess androgens will cause female pseudohermaphroditism and the adrenogenital syndrome, which we will discuss more later. In female pseudohermaphroditism, the woman is chromosomally and gonadally female, but may have male or ambiguous external genitalia. If adrenal androgens are hypersecreted, the sexual characteristics of females become masculinized and male sexual characteristics begin to develop early. Some symptoms that hypersecretion of adrenal androgens cause in females are facial hair, called hirsutism, and a deep voice. If the hypersecretion of adrenal androgens begins before birth in females, the genitalia may be affected to the point that it is indistinguishable between male and female. If the hypersecretion begins in males before puberty, the reproductive system rapidly develops. The boy will be tall early in life, but short as an adult. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which is also called adrenogenital syndrome, refers to a group of inherited disorders of the adrenal gland. It can affect both boys and girls. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia is due to a lack of 21-hydroxylase. Without this enzyme, adrenal glands cannot make aldosterone and cortisol. This insufficiency causes the body to produce more androgens because low levels of cortisol and aldosterone cause more ACTH to be secreted from the pituitary. As we talked about earlier, ACTH secretion is also the stimulus for androgen secretion. Therefore, congenital adrenal hyperplasia results in the development of inappropriate male characteristics. Symptoms vary between boys and girls. Girls usually will still have the normal female reproductive organs, including the ovaries, uterus, and fallopian tubes. However, they do experience some changes. Girls who are affected will have abnormal menstrual periods or will fail to menstruate, a deep voice, early appearance of pubic and armpit hair, excessive body hair, facial hair, and ambiguous genitalia. Boys will have no obvious problems at birth, but will begin having pubertal changes as early as two to three years of age. Some symptoms they might experience include deep voice, early appearance of pubic and armpit hair, early development of male characteristics, enlarged penis, small testes, and well-developed muscles. Both boys and girls will be tall in childhood, but their final height will be shorter than the normal adult. A severe form of congenital adrenal hyperplasia 
is referred to as an adrenal crisis. This occurs in newborns due to a loss of sodium. The symptoms of arrhythmias, electrolyte changes, and vomiting develop shortly after birth. Tests will show abnormal sodium levels in both the blood and urine. 17 OH progesterone, serum DHEA sulfate, and 17 ketosteroids will all be elevated. There will be a decrease in aldosterone and cortisol. 17 hydroxycorticosteroids is a product of breaking down cortisol and will be normal or possibly low. Genetic testing can be done to help diagnose, confirm, and manage this disease. The goal of treatment is to return hormone levels to the normal range. This involves taking a form of cortisol every day, such as dexamethasone, fludrocortisone, or hydrocortisone. In times of stress, severe illness, or surgery, the dose may need to be increased. These medications cannot be stopped suddenly because of the risk for adrenal insufficiency. To avoid this, patients must be gradually tapered off the medications. Babies with ambiguous genitalia will have their gender determined by karyotyping. Girls with genitalia appearing male will have corrective surgery within the first three months of their life. Hopefully you've learned something today about what the adrenal androgens do and how important they are to development.